All right, let's um, continue on. Last time you wrote a function to calculate the distance between two points on a line. And today we'll extend that function to calculate the distance between two objects on a two-dimensional plane. So let's review some, some things we did last time. So we talked about um, that drawing a line from the center of one object to the center of the other is going to create a right triangle with sides A, B, and C. A and B are the vertical and horizontal distances. C is the distance between the two coordinates, which is what we're looking for. And the function line length that we wrote last time, and that's in your game file, can be used to calculate A and to calculate B. But what do we need to do to calculate C? In a right triangle, you remember from geometry, the side opposite the, the right angle, or the 90 degree angle, is called the hypotenuse. So think back to our collision detection as this blue object and the red object get closer and closer together. So their distance at any time is the radius of red plus the radius of blue plus the difference between this distance here. As they get closer and closer together until they touch, then the distance of their two radii is the distance apart. And if the distance of their two radii um, becomes less than the distance between the centers, then we know we, a collision occurred. So let's look at, um, and you'll remember this um, from geometry, the, the Pythagorean theorem, but this is a pretty cool little animation. So what expression computes the length of the hypotenuse of the right triangle? So let's look at this white square. It's surrounded by four gray identical right triangles, each with sides A, B, and C. You see that? So you see this white square, side C, and here's some right triangles. So they just got a square that's, that's turned in this box. So the area of this square, right, is C times C. So let's watch that. Watch that again. So here's this same picture. The gray areas fold in and make two gray rectangles that fit inside the same original square. So the space of the triangles hasn't shifted. It's not gotten any bigger or smaller. They're just positioned around. And you can prove all this in geometry. And by using the links, you can calculate the area of the two squares. Right, so here's, here's the, the, the folded thing. They just moved these gray triangles around. And now what's left is a small square, that's A squared, right, that's side A, and a bigger square, that's side B. Right, so the original white now is split up into two squares that we know their sides, B squared and A squared, um, but it's the same area is in the white. So, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. You remember that is the Pythagorean theorem, named after a Greek mathematician named Pythagoras. And so to get c by itself, well, we did an operation on both sides. So if that's c squared, then we can take the square root and get c. And on this side, we, we take the square root. So the distance formula, using the line length to calculate the distance along the x and y axis, is the line length of any two points squared plus the line length of any two other points squared and the whole thing square root. So let's look at a circle of evaluation. Um, you can look on page uh, 29 of your book and follow along. Here's a circle of evaluation. Here's the Pythagorean theorem formula. So let's look at that and I will uh, try to draw on the screen. All right, so we're looking at this, this formula here. We see we have inside this parentheses, inside this parentheses, a sum and a square root. So here's circles for all of those. And over here they already did for us line length for zero and then square. So let's do the same thing here. This is really hard for me to do on here, but so hopefully you'll get the idea. All right, so here's the inside part here. And I'm not even going to try to write line length. I'm just going to do LL. 
So this is this is the inside of this parentheses here is this circle. And we want to do line length of 3 and 0. All right, then inside that we want to square it. So here's this circle. Uh, it's easier for me to write in big case letters. All right, and then what's done between these two things? All right, well, the operation here is plus, so let's put it here. All right, and we still have one more operation to do. And like you might guess, somebody has written a function for us called SQRT, except it's lowercase. All right, so go ahead and fill out, hopefully neater than that. Um, your uh, evaluate your circles of evaluation, and then let's look at this word problem. So write a function distance, which takes four inputs: the x coordinate of the player, the y coordinate of the player, the x coordinate of the character, and the y coordinate of another of of the the character. So it's going to take an x and a y and an x and a y, four numbers, and return the distance between the two using the distance formula. All right, so we'll use what we did last time and on the previous page to do all that. So let's go over to Dr. Rocket. All right, and if you go in your game file, there's already one down here um, that's not filled in, so we'll use that as a template. So let's look at it. Distance. Number, 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 and it returns a number. That's correct. We have the player's position, PX, PY, and a character's position, CX, CY, so that's what the numbers represent. How far apart are they? Well, I don't like that. That's not a good um, uh, purpose statement, so let's rewrite that. Let's say, given the X and Y coordinates of a player, PX, PY and a character CX CY return the distance between them. Cool. All right. All right. And so here they've they've given us a, a template, so that's fine. And there's really no conditions in this. It's just using that formula, right? So let's start um, inside out and apply this um, formula. So let's go back and look um, at our formula where we want the distance between, um, so 0, 0 and a given point. Let me put that a better way. The, the distance between two points. And we'll do that by calculating the, the horizontal and vertical distance. In fact, let's go back and look at this picture. Um, because we want to be thinking of it this way. right? So any, any points, no matter where they are, we can think of them as um, how far away they are from the x-axis and the y-axis. So they're going to have an X component and a Y component. Okay, so let's look at the parts of the formula. Let's go back to the formula. Oh, the design recipe is probably the best place to look. There. All right. All right. Here's an example. All right. And we want a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So we want line length. All right. Between what? Well, between the two x parts. So the player has these two, the player and the circle have these two x components on one dimension. So let's say px and cx. So there's the line length of that one. I'm going to come down. Let's do line length the other part, which is P 
EY and CY. All right, so that's two line lengths. And tab and put those together. We don't need the zero anymore. In fact, we'll close that up. Uh, let's leave it down here for now. We'll close it up later. All right, so now we got two parts. We got just this inside part and just this inside part. All right, now we each of those have to be squared. So I'm going to select that. Left paren square. Same thing down here. Select it. Left paren SQR. All right, so now we have the square and the square. And we need to add those two together. So I'm going to select these two guys right here. Left paren plus. And then the cool thing about Dr. Racket, I can put, you can hit tab anywhere and it'll line things up by the parentheses. All right, so now we've added them together. And now we need to take the square root of the whole thing. Square root. All right, line that up. Let's bring this, we don't need this guy trailing down here. All right, that looks like the same formula. I uncommented all the examples, so they went through some detailed examples. So let's check those. All right, it looks like those um, examples all passed. Um, let's look at the, um, the slides. They give us a few more examples, I think. All right, so go back and um, look and go ahead and type in or write in in your design recipe the distance function that's here that we just made. Um, and then you can type that into your um, game, Joe game also. Um, and then let's go ahead and look. I think they give us some more examples. All right, a player at 320 and 240 and a danger at 400, 159. 320, 240. Three twenty at two forty. Danger at four hundred one fifty nine. Four hundred one fifty nine. All right, so we'll call it like that. I think that's what we said. Yep, that's what we said. For each of the five, let's see. So let me put this one in here, like that. All right, and so it's not an exact number. Oh, actually, that's less, so let's, we won't do an example of it. And we'll talk about we can talk about that. If you remember from geometry, there's only some special ones that line up, um, like three, four, and five, make a right triangle out of whole numbers. Most of the time, um, with or with a lot of numbers, that hypotenuse um, is an irrational number. So that's what in 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 racket it says it's inexact. So it says. Um, it's an inexact number, that's what this pound i means. That's 113 point, and here's a bunch of decimal places. So that's close to the exact number, but it's just telling you, hey, the exact number um, is an irrational number, which means we can't write it down with decimal notation. Uh, but it's close to this, close to 113.846. And so there's different, uh, there's other uh, racket um, tests you can do, but I don't think example um, works that way. So um, after you get yours typed in and get it to pass the tests, then um, pause right here and go ahead and practice with code doing a distance for each one of these. So pause, so, um, pause here, get this written in your book and get it typed in and tested with these examples. So pause and do that. And then work through, um, do the distance uh, calculations for, for these on this page too. All right, great. So today you wrote a function to calculate the distance between two objects on a two-dimensional plane. Next time, we'll use this function to determine whether two game objects collide. Thanks.